Hello and welcome to this Harvest edition of Together in Worship. It's a day of thanksgiving, of joy and celebrating all that God has given us. It's a favourite time of the year for so many. The Bible is full of references to farming and agriculture. Even Jesus told stories about sowers in fields and men who built barns. There's a lot of metaphor there as well. A harvest of souls, perhaps, the growth of the seed of the kingdom. And we'll look at that a little later. But let's also enjoy some traditional harvest songs. We've heard a little of Come Ye Thankful People Come. Now let's go to the other well-known song, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. some words of Psalm 65. O God, you deserve praise in Zion, where we keep our promises to you. And all who live under the sun celebrate and sing because of you. You take care of the earth and send rain to help the soil grow all kinds of crops. Your rivers never run dry, and you prepare the earth to produce much grain. You water all of its fields and level the lumpy ground. You send showers of rain to soften the soil and help the plants sprout. Wherever your footsteps touch the earth, a rich harvest is gathered. Desert pastures blossom and mountains celebrate. Meadows are filled with sheep and goats. Valleys overflow with grain and echo with joyful songs. That reading inspired our second song of praise. To thee, O Lord, our hearts we raise in hymns of adoration.
Our prayer is taken for some words written by Alan Bateman. O God, you are the father of all the human race, the God of all creation who rules in time and space. Despite our faults and failings, your love remains the same, and you alone we worship and praise your holy name. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you, our saviour and our friend. Your life you gave to save us by love which knows no end. As God and man, you showed us just how we ought to live. So Lord, in glad obedience, our lives to you we give. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for gifts of many kinds, new life and love and power that changes hearts and minds. We praise you for the comfort and strength you bring each day as one who stands beside us and helps us as we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 8 While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, 
but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way they are choked by life's worries, riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. We always like to feature Salvation Army bands or songsters on here, on Together in Worship. And here on this Harvest Sunday, we'd like to play again the international staff songsters singing For the Beauty of the Earth. This is a lovely song and we're sure it will be a blessing. When I was five or six, I lived on a farm. Well, actually, it was only for a week. My father had friends who wanted a week away, so we looked after their small farm just for those few days. And it was my job to feed the calves. 
I measured out the food and fed them every day, and to be honest, that's all I remember. But I do remember that I loved it. As a small boy, it excited me to be on a real farm. Now, I don't know what real farmers think about it all today. It's not an exciting holiday. It's big business and it's very stressful. There are huge pressures in the lives of farmers financially and weather-wise, and we can maybe only imagine that at the end of a long year, the harvest, if it's good, if it's successful, would be a huge relief. Maybe there's a feeling of great joy as well. The stuff has been sold to the buyer, and hopefully a profit has been made for the farmer and not just for the supermarket. Jesus spoke of a farmer's profit a hundred times more than was sown. It's no wonder that his farmer was joyful. He covered his losses. All the grain that died or was eaten, he still got a return of a hundred times more than he'd planted. You imagine your savings giving you a hundred times more than you invested. That would make you joyful. And we know the story of the sower so well. It's one of the first stories we heard at Sunday school. I remember wearing a cardboard beak and acting the story out as a crow. It would have been okay, but I was 22 at the time. What kind of soil is the question that's often asked, stony or weedy? But I need to say this, the parable is not only about the soil. There was rejoicing at the profit that was made a hundred times more. But I should say this too, the parable is not only about the profit. This parable, as Luke tells us, It's about the seed. The farmer made a profit because the seed was good. He sowed good seed that grew wherever it was planted. It may have been trodden on, taken away, not watered properly. It may have been choked. But when it was put into prepared ground, the good seed grew spectacularly. The parable is about good seed and Jesus explained it symbolised the word of God. This word of God, that book, given by inspiration of God, wholly trustworthy. When it finds a place in receptive hearts, open minds and willing lives, it's an investment. It changes lives. It has an effect that can spread far and wide. The scripture, says Paul, is profitable. There's a return on it. God's word, sown, shared, spoken about, and applied to a person's life, it's a source of great joy. Who can know all the results of those times that we spread the profitable word? I conducted the funeral of a Salvation Army brigadier who once was an unemployed Liverpool docker in the 1930s. He travelled to Grimsby and found himself living in the army's hostel. The captain shared the word of the gospel with him. He got saved, became an officer and in the 1960s was the head of the army's social work in the Caribbean. That's how the word of God can bring a harvest. Who would have thought that a hostile resident would receive and give so much by the grace of God? I got saved at the age of 13 in a church holiday club. I went to Sunday school for just six weeks. And on the seventh week, went to the army Sunday school instead and never went back to the church. They never knew what happened to me. They probably thought I was a a flash in the pan. One of those boys that are lost. He came for a few weeks, oh well, never came again. And look, here I am, supposedly a Sunday school failure. The word of God never returns to him void. There's always a profit when the word of God, that good seed, is sown. And when Christ comes again, we will come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, that harvest of souls. I've been reading Psalm 119. Now, it's a long psalm, but here are some verses. My heart stands in awe of your word. Are we in awe of the Bible, its power? When I look into all your commandments, I will praise you. Do you praise God for the commandments that he has given? Your law is my delight. Are you delighted when you open your Bible and read? And today, as we celebrate the joy of harvest... We shall come rejoicing when we're seeing again that the seed that brings the harvest is the word of God itself. And we read Psalm 119, verse 111. Your statutes are the joy of my heart. 
Do you know, I think all Bibles should be printed with colourful covers because the inside is joyful and exciting and inspiring and profitable. These are the words of eternal life. The seed, said Jesus, is the word of God. I want to encourage you. I think the parable where Jesus talked about the sower is a word of encouragement. Jesus was confident, and I think we can be too. Jesus was a man filled with joy, and we can be too. When Jesus taught this parable, he was getting into big trouble. He'd not long been banned from the synagogues. The Pharisees were criticising his behaviour. The scribes were complaining about his teaching. And Jesus knew that soon his followers would be discouraged. Sometimes it felt like his message was just not getting through. Rocky ground, birds that eat the seed, thorns that choke the young shoots. What's that to me? The harvest is going to be a hundredfold, he said. Now there isn't a farmer alive who sees every seed germinating. There will be losses, there will be failures. But despite setbacks, in the end there should be a harvest. The seed of the Bible isn't just good stories, nice advice, someone's opinion. It's the word of God. It's living, it's active, it's profitable. There will be a good harvest. Romans 1 verse 16, Paul writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. In other words, says Paul, and he's reflecting this parable, I think, I have confidence in what the Bible says. It's powerful stuff. It will save those who believe in Christ. It doesn't matter that there are thorny issues raised by society or that there are influences that try to steal its effectiveness. It doesn't matter that time and other activities and adverse opinions crowd it out, strangle its message for many people. In the end, the word of God is believable, powerful and available. And for us who try to spread the word of God to a difficult and unbelieving and often unreceptive generation, that is an encouragement. Let God encourage you today. As you read the Bible, be confident in it, believe it, rejoice in it. Pray for preachers and evangelists, pray for Christians to sow that seed, because it is the power of God to save us and others. When the word of God is read, be aware that God will speak. When the army reaches out to those in need, pray that there will be opportunities to speak the words of the gospel as much as we do the work of the gospel. Let the church confidently, joyfully sow the seed of the gospel because faith comes to people's hearts through hearing the word of God. We can be confident about talking about Jesus to those who don't know him when that appropriate moment comes along. In witness and in work, let the seed you sow be the word of God to them and watch for the harvest, pray for the harvest and see God bring in that harvest.
Shall we pray together? Father, we thank you for your word, that seed that brings life to others, that brings a harvest. Father, today thousands of people will turn to Christ in faith. We praise you for that harvest. Build your church, Lord, that we might come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. But in these days, Lord, it seems sometimes that our words fall on stony ground, our actions taken for granted. It feels like there's little response, but the seed is perfect. And we pray, Lord, that there will be an increase in the harvest and your kingdom will grow where we are. That seed, that word, has made us joyful. It's changed our lives. And we want others to know that new life as well. So please, Lord, give power to your word, encouragement to the church, and confidence to each one of us to think, live, and speak as your witnesses. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful love for each one of us, the love that sought us, that found us, changed our hearts. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you for joining with us once again. We hope you've enjoyed this time of celebration, thanking God for the harvest and for all the goodness that he gives to us. Join us again next week. But until then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen.